Now we're going to take one further step in using these new ideas of modes from singular value decomposition in optics and show a new way of looking at optical systems quite generally. This approach is very powerful. For example, it lets us derive new fundamental laws in optics, and it relates quite closely to the ideas of using meshes of interferometers to implement arbitrary linear optical systems. So let's see how this works. Now we're going to look at the idea of singular value decomposition again, but for the more general case of a scatterer, optical device or object, described by some operator D. So instead of just having free space in here, we are allowing some other device. But whatever it is, we can describe it by a linear operator that maps from source functions to resulting wave functions. One immediate consequence is that because we can perform the singular value decomposition of any linear operator, we have what we can call the mode converter basis sets of functions. These are, first of all, a set of orthogonal source functions, so functions psi s, that lead one by one to a set of corresponding orthogonal received waves, phi r here. In turn, that means that there is a set of orthogonal channels through any linear scatterer. And these sets of channels are simply given by these mode converter input and output function pairs. This realization that any optical system can be represented using an orthogonal set of input functions that map one by one to an orthogonal set of output functions is quite a profound realization in optics. It leads to new fundamental results and a new way of making arbitrary optics. Now, we know that we can construct any unitary linear operator in optics using a mesh of interferometers. And we now know we can perform the singular value decomposition of any linear optical system, which decomposes it mathematically into a product of three operators, a unitary operator, a diagonal operator, and another unitary operator. Can we take one more step and emulate any linear operator with interferometer meshes? Well, here is the architecture that we think can do this. First of all, here we have a kind of mesh of interferometers we've already seen. It can take any four inputs here, orthogonal input vectors, and line them up to come out in single waveguides. What we have over here is the same thing. I've flipped it upside down for compactness, but it's just the same kind of object. We can think of this one as doing the opposite. It takes light in a waveguide here and turns it into a specific vector of outputs here. Light in the second waveguide, it turns into another orthogonal set of vectors here and so on for the third and fourth waveguides. And we've also added a set of modulators in the middle that can modulate amplitude and phase on these waveguides as they go through. So the self-aligning input coupler mesh on the left can couple any four orthogonal inputs, each to different signal waveguides in the middle, to so these waveguides in here. This is a first arbitrary unitary matrix multiplication. The amplitude and phase of this conversion can then be controlled by the modulators in the middle. These modulators are implementing the singular values. They're the strengths of the connections. Light in these single waveguides now, emerging from those modulators, can be converted into any four orthogonal outputs on the right by self-aligning the output coupler mesh on the right, if we like. This is the second arbitrary unitary matrix multiplication. So the optical units in this mesh implement the singular value decomposition of some operator D. And for an optical system of a given dimensionality, we can therefore emulate any operator D and hence any linear optical system. Note, we are implementing an arbitrary linear optical component by constructing it using its mode converter basis sets. The input mode converter basis functions are the ones that are converted to light in single waveguides here in the middle. 
The output mode converter basis functions are the ones generated as a result of light in one of these waveguides, giving us an output vector, and so on, for each of these different input waveguides to our output coupler system here. The coupling strengths from the input to output mode converter modes are the singular values as implemented by the modulators in the middle. Obviously, if the singular value is to have a magnitude greater than 1, we would have to add some amplification in here as well. This is the first proof that any linear optical component is possible in principle, and that any linear optical system can be factored into a set of two beam interferences. The proof here is that we've shown you how you can do it. Because we can now imagine that we can make any linear optical machine we want, at least in principle, we can construct some proofs deriving new basic laws in optics. We will illustrate this here by proving a new Kirchhoff radiation law. Kirchhoff's radiation law states that the absorptivity of a surface, that's the fraction of the incident light power it absorbs at a given wavelength, must equal the emissivity of a surface. That's the amount of thermal radiation power it emits at a given wavelength relative to the amount a black body would emit. This is required so that two bodies at the same temperature cannot exchange thermal radiation in such a way that one of them heats up the other one, which would violate the second law of thermodynamics. This law is commonly extended also to state that the absorptivity of a wave in a given direction incident on a surface is equal to the emissivity back into the same direction, giving a directional radiation law. Now, this directional derivation was done neglecting diffraction, so it is not clear it applies to small objects, such as wavelength scale or smaller objects, and it's not clear it applies to light beams, especially focused ones without a unique direction. And it was also done explicitly presuming reciprocity. Now, most optical systems are reciprocal, but not all of them are. So this directional law does not work for non-reciprocal objects, which could, for example, absorb nothing for light in one direction while being able to emit in that direction. So let's try to sort this out. And to do this, we're going to do a thought experiment. And a thought experiment involves this machine here. Now, what do we have in this machine? First of all, we have a black body up here, and we're coupling it through a single mode waveguide in and out. And then we send it into a circulator, which is a known kind of non-reciprocal object, so that light coming out of here would actually come out along this single mode guide, and any light coming in in this waveguide would go back into the black body. So we know we can make this kind of optical machine, that correctly takes this power and turns it into one, for example, the first of the mode converter input modes for this object. And then any light that comes back into these waveguide to free space converters that is in this output mode converter mode, so the one that corresponds to the input one, will be collected and this output unitary transformer will take all of that light and feed it back into the black body. So, because we know we can construct any linear optical machine, we know that we can make one, like we've been describing, that maps the output from this single mode black body to a given mode converter input mode to be instant on the object. And it maps the resulting scattered output, which is all into this corresponding mode converter output mode, back into the single mode black body. As I said, some power from the black body is absorbed by the object, and the rest is scattered back to the black body. And no other power is scattered to the black body. Even if we put power in these other waveguides, it will be in different input modes, modes that are orthogonal to this particular one here. And any scattered light from those will also be orthogonal to this output mode. So none of that scattered light from any other input modes will be scattered back into the black body. Now, for equilibrium, the object must emit as much power as it absorbs. So the absorptivity of the input mode converter beam equals the emissivity into the corresponding output mode converter beam. To get balance, we must have an equal emitted power 
back into this output. Otherwise, we do not get equilibrium between this object, which is presumably at the same temperature as the black body. Since this works for any specific pair of the mode converter input and output functions, we obtain a new radiation law, valid including all effects of diffraction and also, for the first time, even for non-reciprocal optical devices. We made no assumption here that this object had to be a reciprocal object. That law we can state in this form, the absorptivity of any mode converter input mode of an object is equal to the emissivity into the corresponding mode converter output mode. That's a new law, and from this law we can mathematically prove several other laws. So we see that using this approach of looking at optical systems, using the concept of singular value decomposition, shows first all linear optical devices are mode converters. It shows there is a set of orthogonal channels through any linear optical system. It shows that any linear optical device can be emulated by two-beam interferometers. It gives us a practical way of performing arbitrary linear operations, and it proves new fundamental laws. These laws also show that the mode converter basis sets, in addition to being the most economical and complete description of a linear optical system, are of fundamental importance in optics, because there are basic physical laws that apply only to them. Mode converter basis sets are the right fundamental description for linear optical objects and devices. I'll finish by just showing some references for this talk. Most of what I've been discussing here is discussed in great detail in the main reference, Waves, Modes, Communication and Optics, at the top here.